your drum recording technique? What's your, do you have a kind of classic you go to or are you a few mics or a million mics kind of guy? What's your, I guess your I general? have, I'm a sort of like few mics on the kit, but then maybe it will be a fair few mics with, additional things you know i'll have sure. like a lot of character a lot of character and i'll start with um, a lot of the time i'm like a one mic on the kick guy you know there's not that many try to avoid too many layers of stuff like that i'm usually like yeah. one mic on the kick looking into the hole at the front that's usually a a you know bayer opus 65 i think they're called not sure. that common. I think I'll have to look that off. Check those out. They're amazing. Um, used to be a D12, and I heard this was like, ah, it's like that with the EQ. So literally one of those, something like um, a Bayer 201 on the top of the snare. Sure. Or a, I, for a while I went through the case, you know, you've you got those modified 57s. Yes. So like the tape on mod or something. Yeah. I've used those for a while, but the Bayer 201 is great. I kind of really into those. Sure. And that's that. A lot of the time I'll be a mono overhead over the snare, which, you know, gives you a nice bit of guts and that kind of overall kit sound. And I find, you know, once you get stereo and big, you kind of lose punch, you know, or it start, yeah. you can start getting phase. Or more mics, stuff. more phase problems. It, yeah, yeah, it yeah. goes on. So some, that's a good, like, straight down the middle punch, you mm. know, and you get that kind of weight around it. And then... Yeah, usually uh, not always a high hat mic. Sometimes a high hat mic if you want to bring that out because you get a lot of that. Um, and then tom mics, and that's the kind of basic, you know. And then comes the weird stuff, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so sure. you can, you got that then. You can dial it in, or you can do something odd. But then it's the other mics that give you the character for me, you know. Which yeah. is Sometimes it's like. I had this really nice old RCA um, 6203, which is like a sort of mic this shape. Sure. Green, army green thing, old RCA ribbon mic, which I'll put, if I'm the drummer, I'll put somewhere like here or here, depending. Sometimes here you get too much hi-hat, but looking at kick and snare. Yeah, and so sometimes, about rib height then. Yeah, kind of Not rib kind height. Of sometimes it's like drummer head height. Sure. And if it's too too much that side, I'll move it this side. But that is like an instant, it's a great microphone for that. You get instant kind of like low mid darkness and punch, which is great for like adding in, yeah. you know, sustain. And, and I guess you're listening to what the drummer's listening to as well. It's right that there, position, you know? yeah, so yeah. It's how they're balancing themselves. Yeah, so that is usually a, one of the features. And then recently I've been really into contact mics again. Oh, yes. Yeah, the seducers, I love them. <laughs> And I got, I've got a pair of those. And what I do with those is put those on the kick and snare. That was wow. a big part of the the new Queens of the Stone Age record on Villains. Sure. That sound, you know, Josh had told me about his idea was to get this little vacuous sound that was odd and sort of uh, truncated, you know, short sounds that were just like, so I thought I kind of remember using those in the pool. Ben Hiller used to have them a lot, I think. So I remember getting a pair of those and putting those on, and then yeah, saying to Josh, oh, I've got these contact mics. They're great for that sort of stuff. And you, and you sort of like I do is put one on usually on like the front hoop of the kick drum. Yeah. So on like the front head, you, they're like you know they look like a basic an Apple Watch strap. Yep. The cable coming off the back and you put them on there, a bit of double-sided tape, and you stick them down and they give this kind of, like, sometimes it's a really good sound. A lot of the time it's a kind of like this boxy, closed down thing. But if you then overdrive that and sometimes compress it, a lot of time you don't have to compress it with the, with the distortion, um, you get an amazing kind of like hip hop Incredible. crunch, yeah. you know? So I do that, and then one on the snare, a lot of the time it's stuck on the side of the snare, or if that's, you get a lot of hi-hat coming in, a lot of the time what you can do is take a microphone boom stand, and I stick it onto that, mm -hmm. and then you can just like position it okay. and drop it over the top so it's you know looking right down onto the snare, just sneak it in. So yeah, so you kind of use both of those, and you can um, drive them and a bit of EQ, and you get a kind of, nasty old distorted short yeah. 
So you've been using a lot more down. drive since working with them? Or yeah, is I it something so. you've always yeah, done? Something, actually, something I've always done is like overdriving things, especially drums. Yeah. Ambient mics as well. I love overdriving ambient mics because you get this kind of explosive, you know, you, there's a bit more tension in there. A bit there. of aggression. A bit of aggression, yeah. yeah. And you sneak that in and all of a sudden it's, yeah, without too much level, it's got much more kind of bang to it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's a, another favourite. And I am um, fascinated that you haven't gone for any of the cliche sort of like classic or very common things like, a, you know, a D112 on kick or yeah. 57s anywhere. I mean, how yeah. do you approach uh, bass and guitars as well then? If, um, are you quite... Yeah, what's your untraditionally? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, I've been, I've done that stuff. You know, I used to do that. Great mics to use. I used to use yeah, yeah. D one twelve. Never. I was into D twelves or D twenty fives kicks. Then I found the Bay and was like, oh, it's like that, but with a bit of EQ. Yeah, so, and coming from a console with no EQ. Yeah, I guess exactly. That's dream. Yeah, it's always yeah. I was always into like that. Was part of the thing I learned when I was back in the exchange. Was like, oh, I've realised if you move this microphone out a little bit, or it changes the sound so much. So that's a big part of it. John, that was one of the things I think that got me that kept me on the Queen session that first time was I think I didn't use an EQ for the whole. I mean, like in that first week, yeah, I don't think I used an EQ, and I was like, well, I'm just going to go and move the mic, and I'll be like constantly it keeps me fit because I'm just literally yeah, like running between okay, rooms, just run back in there, move it, come back in, and be like, yeah, nearly, <laughs> yeah. And Josh was like, oh shit, I see. Okay, he hasn't used an EQ, and then he was like. He kind of, I didn't actually realize I hadn't used an EQ and then he's like brought it up. Mm. So then that became a challenge <laughs> not to use an EQ for the whole record, which I think we did. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's that a great discipline about, as an engineer like that, too. Totally. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. You're just, you're getting the right sound from you, the get go rather the right, than be like, oh, it needs more tops. Which is the thing. Yeah. Don't reach for the EQ straight away. And that part of it was because I was in the room in that exchange studio. It was one room. So there was no, you're not listening through speakers. I was listening to the kit, you know, yeah. you are on headphones and then you listen to the kit. So you hear it and then you kind of hear what you're getting back and you're like, oh, OK. You know, then you go and move the mics. And I learned moving the mics, even with a pair of headphones on sometimes, moving the microphones changes it so much. Yeah. So just having that discipline of using microphones, you know, that's that's a big part of them. And using the placement. Yeah, yeah, using the placement and moving and different types of mics, you know. A ribbon mic is, you know, is going to have a different sound to a dynamic or a condenser or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I'm picking the mic. It's not all just that. a roll off at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, sometimes now you still go through the same process of the EQ, you know, but getting it working that source from the start kind of leads on, you know. Yeah, of course. Better, it's great that he noticed it. that as well. Yeah. 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 Apparently, see, yeah. Gave me the impression that I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which was good.